guys, welcome back to our channel. We're the Garso Twins. I'm Britta. And I'm Carly. We would love it if you would subscribe down below and hit the bell so you're notified when we upload. We have our May favorites today. We are so sorry it's late. We had like a crazy couple of weeks, but we are back and we are filming May favorites because everything in here is like Gold. May, it's like May go in yearly favorites. Yeah. It's so good. So we have to tell you about them and let's get started. Okay, I'm starting here because this could be my favorite product of the month in so long. This is like one of my favorite skincare yeah, me products. Too. It's the Naturium Marshmallow Root Barrier Balm. You guys have heard us talk about Naturium before. We have had a really hard time finding products that have worked for us long term. Like yeah. I feel like we've used some things, we've really enjoyed them, but then over time like our skin would become sensitized or we just found something we liked maybe a little bit more. Yeah, I had to return two products I can think of off the top of my head that my skin just like didn't like. Like I would have like it just like I would get red and yes. I don't know like something about some of these products well I will and say in most of their products they use like way too many actives in my opinion yeah but I had a weird thing with the squalene oil too I mean it's fine but yeah basically we've been trying to like we keep ordering from them because yeah. we love the brand yeah we love what they're doing and we were just like we gotta find products we love yeah you know and we feel like we're the only ones we're the only ones that like haven't been able to find anything we love yeah and we saw that they came out with like this barrier skin barrier repair line and immediately I was like I need this in my life in immediately yeah. like I the day it launched we placed this order yeah. and I wanted to try they have a face lotion a cleanser and then this barrier balm but I we love a good like balm like mm -hmm. I love the slugging method sometimes if my skin is really really destroyed I'll put Aquaphor on as like my last Same. step I did that recently until I got this yeah and this is like totally like replace my alcohol yes and so we had ordered it and then I saw Devin our friend here well uh, she is on YouTube now mm -hmm. and Instagram devs today and she did like a quick I don't know if it was just like a it was I think it was just on her stories talking about yeah. this and she was saying people with I think she said oily skin would really like it because it almost dried down as like a matte finish so it doesn't leave your face really like heavy feeling mm -hmm. and greasy and then I was like oh gosh now I'm even more excited to get this in the mail and she was right because my favorite thing about this is it makes makes that like occlusive barrier but it definitely dries down it doesn't it doesn't feel greasy or sticky like aquaphor and it works like this repairs yeah. my skin barrier and I can use retin-a now more often because I put this on top and I feel like it's making the retin-a work better because I haven't had any breakouts really and then same. it also is like at the same time keeping my skin barrier healthy so I can keep using retin-a yeah it's wild I like like I said for like weeks before we got this, I kept telling Britta, I'm like, Britta, my skin is so irritated. Like I was putting eyeshadow yeah. on and my eyes were burning. Yeah. Um, my cheeks were getting red like at the back for some reason. And I was having to like literally like I'd put alcohol on my fingers and like stamp I was doing that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was helping. Like aquaphor yeah. is like the dream. We all know that. Um, but then we got this in the mail and this has done like an even better job. Yes. But yeah, I feel like the thing that I do love though, even though it doesn't feel heavy, is when I like wash my face in the morning and I just use like, um, sometimes I even just use water because I do have sensitive skin, but like you still feel it on your skin. Yeah. Like it truly created. But a little goes a long way, like I, occlusive barrier. I feel like when I first got this, I was a bit heavy handed, you know how I can be. Yeah, and let's I, see. I was like a little heavy handed and I'm like, oh, oh we're about the same. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, like this. well I really need to like take it easy because it's not expensive, but it's not cheap. And if I'm using it, like basically every night I didn't want to go through it really quick so even last night I took like a very small amount and it still was like enough to create mm -hmm. that layer like obviously the more like if I'm like my skin is feeling super dehydrated and like my barrier is just shot and my skin is red and sensitized I'll use more um and not to mention the packaging I love this blue Me so too. much it's like the prettiest collection that I feel like they've come out with. Mm -hmm. So I can't say enough good things. I yeah. love everything about it. I love it too. Besides the herbivore vitamin C, this is my yes. favorite thing that we've tried. Yes. And now they're mm -hmm. both like staples in my collection. Yeah, agreed. Okay, we have another home run. <laughs> um, and <laughs> this- we talked about before. Yeah, Britta has talked about this. Um, so it's the Isle of Paradise Dark Self Tanning Oil Mist. Yeah, you didn't put this in a monthly favorites, did you? No, I talked about it, I think, in, like, that Sephora video we did of, like, okay. the haul. Right, so Britta picked this up, and then I picked it up because yeah. she just kept looking like she had really good color, <laughs> and she said it was so easy to use. I put it on today, so it hasn't fully developed. I did it yesterday. You did it yesterday. Mm -hmm. So you can actually see, yeah. actually, that's a good... So I I feel like I'll probably look like her yeah. in, like, maybe eight hours, Yeah, I'd say. 
Because um, this is, well, we've talked about it before, but this is a type of product that you don't rinse off. Like, it's meant to just stay on your skin. So, like, of course you shower the next day and then it'll rinse off. But it just kind of soaks into your skin, so there's not there's not a layer to rinse off. Yeah, really. so we did we did film, film a reel today, so yeah. hopefully that's up before this goes up. And I did a reel on the Naturium as well, so you can see the texture up close, so I can link that down below. Um... But basically, because it's like a dual phase, like oil and water situation, the oil like really hydrates your yes. skin. Like you use it on dry skin and I don't feel like I need lotion. Yeah, so it is clear. So how we use it, and I feel like this is very imperative because there are some very negative reviews on Sephora and I just think it's being used improperly. Well, I just don't think this is for beginners. If you are looking for, mm -hmm. it's it's kind of frustrating. It's like a twofold because if you are someone that hates self-tanner because it's very a high maintenance process you would love this because it's so easy to use mm -hmm. but then if you're also not familiar with how to apply self tanner you wouldn't really like this because you have to know how to like you know rub it in properly yeah. so um I totally get this call up but a lot of people were saying like if you just spray it directly on your legs your arms like your bathroom floor is going to get like really oily oh yeah and I was that Neutrogena product that's also a spray that I also really like um for like a drugstore option I was doing that and I had the same experience so for this one Britta said this and this is really smart like just spray it into your hand yeah. like a couple pumps the spray pattern's hand. too large for yeah. sure so then you spray it in your hands you rub them together and or not even rub them together because it just depends if you're doing your legs or your arms. Yeah. Um, and then you just like rub kind of in circular motions. You don't need mitts. Like no. you just use your hands and obviously rinse your hands immediately after. But it's so easy to rub in. And the other key is you cannot use too much. Like I think that people were using too much and then they said it ended up looking like really sloppy. Well, because I imagine if you're, this is what I think people are doing. Like the hand thing is totally key because if you were to spray it on your legs and the spray pattern is almost in like a circle. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you spray it like here and then they're probably spraying it like here and here and trying to like spray down their leg instead of just using what they sprayed once and like really just rubbing it in. Like the key is just to use just enough product to like, you can feel like you, you, you still need to like cover the dry areas. So enough that you can like do circular motions and really rub it in, but not too much where you're like a drippy oily mess. Yeah. I would say it's just enough where you feel it going into your, you actually feel it going into your yeah, skin. Yeah. It you, should sink yeah, in your skin. You don't skin. want like an extra layer. And for me, that's like two pumps per leg. Yes. Me too. Um, two pumps per arm, one pump on my chest. And then sometimes I'll go back in with like one pump everywhere. See, I didn't even do that. Like I'll I go, feel like I'll it do just like one risky. more, one more pump. Um, well, cause it's already sunk in. Yeah, that's true. So it's like, you have to let it sink in which it does really quickly and then I'll go back in with just like one pump everywhere so kind of like half the amount that I did the first time if I want like a little bit of like an added color but we're getting so passionate about this because basically <laughs> once you figure this out this is the easiest yes. product and like it gives you such a natural looking tan mm -hmm. like you can see on Brita yeah it does and this is the dark one there's actually three shades we didn't say that um, this is the darkest yeah, one. Yeah, I wouldn't personally go lighter than this because mm -hmm. I think the dark isn't even that dark. Yeah, I agree. But, you know, to each their own. Yeah. Um, but it's so easy to use. And, like, forever, I just would always, like, and especially in the summer, like, not like how pale I look. But I didn't want to, like, go through the process of, like, getting my mousse out and, like, my yes, mitt. exactly. Even though that's not even that hard. But you guys know. But it's it like is. Because then, then you have to, like, throw your mitt in the laundry and, yeah. like, figure that it's out. It's like the whole thing. Yeah. So to have something that I can just do, like, weekly is just like a game changer. Yeah, I've been doing it every Friday because it's just so easy and yeah. like part of my routine. And like I said, you leave it on so you don't have to rinse it off. I put it on Friday, I get dressed, and then like by Saturday, Sunday, I have like some color on me. Yeah, I forgot to do it yesterday, but that's why I did it today. And oh, the other thing, it doesn't really smell that bad. Like as, yeah. as long as you, again, don't use too much. Like you smell that tanning smell a little bit, but it's not nearly as bad as like the mousses or, yeah. I don't know, this stuff is amazing. It's so good. Good. Like we love it. I actually would just love if they came out with the travel size oh, because yeah. this would be per like this is going to be good to travel with. But well, what's the fill weight? It's big. Oh, 200 ml. Yeah. Um, because, um, again, like whenever we're traveling yeah. and it's usually for like a wedding or something, you know? yeah. <laughs> I like don't want to like, we're going to have like brought I, our moose stuff and yeah. I just like don't want that. I did bring this with me last weekend, uh -huh. but I didn't use it because I was like, oh, I look fine. Yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah. The color lasts a long it time. It does. But they you know. say like it's a product that you're supposed to just reapply as you see the color fading. So like technically you could just have this color all the time yeah. if you kept. But it is it's not super expensive. Yeah, it's, but it's not very. It's cheap. not cheap. Yeah. And like as you can see, I'm like 
going through it because I love it so much. But it is a product I will keep repurchasing. Okay, the one the one bad thing that most people have mentioned in the Sephora reviews, I love the innovation here with this packaging. Yeah, it's really But cute. it is so true that once you take this cap off, you don't have a place to put it down, so it like can roll away. Okay, so I have like a tiles. Oh, I don't. Okay, so I <laughs> it doesn't what, bother me because I just like lay it down. Like if this. you guys use this product, this is what I've been doing. You put the cap down, and then when you go to lay it down, you just lay it on the other side of the cap, and the cap prevents it from rolling off the counter. So that's what I've been doing, but um, it is annoying, yeah. and I will agree with that in terms of the reviews. Yeah, but I do kind of like the double cap situation though. If you are traveling with this, because it has like this cap and oh, then I this. Lost, I so, lost my inner. Oh, you did. So yeah. it won't like leak. Yeah, again, I, I think most people would lose that cap. I don't yeah. even know where it went, so. Okay, sorry, we got super passionate about this first two. We're gonna go through the rest of these yeah. pretty quick. Um, so we both purchased and loved the Vanna Cream Facial Moisturizer, all-time favorite AM moisturizer with the SPF 30. Carly did a reel on this. I did a video, YouTube video, so I'll link that. Oh, you did the video mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. yeah. So this is, the Vanna Cream Facial Moisturizer is just our favorite. We repurchased it like at least 10 times, if not like 15 times. Yeah. Like it's just, once it's done, at least for me and for you probably, I just repurchase another mm -hmm. one. I like can't be without it. Favorite AA moisturizer. It de delivers the perfect amount of moisture, in my opinion, without feeling heavy on the skin. It wears well under makeup, etc. It's cheap, it's perfect. And so when we saw that they had a version with SPF 30, a mineral SPF, it's zinc oxide 19.5%, we immediately wanted to try it. And I will say for me, this wasn't like love at first try. The first time I tried it, I was like, wow, this is like pretty heavy. But like, what was I expecting at 19.5%? Yeah, that's zinc. the biggest zinc percentage I own. Yeah. Right? So I was like, oh wow, this feels kind of heavy on the skin and it's leaving my skin looking pretty dewy. But then I realized that you really have to use this as your moisturizer. I was trying to use Same. moisturizer under it and you can't do that. If Like I would say we have combination skin in the winter, it's more dry. Um, in the summer like right now it's combo and it was just too much layered on top of a moisturizer so i just use this like as i put my vitamin c on in the morning and my skin's like a little bit tacky then i'll go in with this on top as my moisturizer it i will say i don't know how at 19.5 percent the white cast isn't even that no, bad no it's not i don't know how they do it but it's really not that bad it like rubs in almost immediately and it does feel thick, but not thicker than a moisturizer. So if you're using this as your moisturizer, then it's fine. Yeah, and then you have to let it sit on your skin if you're going in with makeup. Like I would let it sit for a few minutes until it like kind of tones down the greasiness a little bit. But I love this. Me too. If you use it as your moisturizer, which then, like I said, I think in that video, that this would be like the perfect vacation SPF. Yes. Because you're mm -hmm. just like, you know, on vacation or at least when we're on vacation if you're like on those types of vacations you yes. guys know what i'm yeah. talking about where you don't want to like put on a full face makeup you don't want to have your full skincare routine to just like throw this on is so easy yes and it really does act as a moisturizer and an and SPF. i feel like because it's 19.5 percent you know you're going to be protected like i was watching kate's yeah. video state of kate um and she was doing a like a video of product she's tried recently and she was saying that she really she was tried the wonder beauty one and oh, she's yeah. like i really like a zinc oxide sunscreen because i feel like it's protecting Same. me and that's how we feel like i know a lot mm. of people don't like how it feels on the skin but i feel like it creates that layer of product and you know that the sun is not gonna yeah the that. whole reason to wear a sunscreen is to protect your face yeah like, it's not for fun right? yes yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. i mean it should be fun but i think like yeah we always look for zinc and i def definitely a high percentage yeah so. So we love this. Go pick it up on Amazon. It's so affordable. Okay, next up is something I'm wearing today. It's the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in the shade Aster. I love this. I did a reel, so I'll link that down below so you can see the swatches of all three that I picked up. Um, but this one is just like the prettiest rose gold, and it has, I would say, like micro glitter in here. And I do love, like, really, like, I also got um, a little quirky from ColourPop and that one is super super glittery so more of like a special occasion shade whereas this one I like because it's a little more subtle more suitable for like every day so <laughs> our dog is like looking at us over oh, like, Come on, I'll swatch it on the back of my hand for you um but it's just like the prettiest I would just say like peachy like rose gold type shade it just goes with every eye look um and I've been wearing it like literally non-stop because I think it's just suitable for like I said, any occasion. Um, it's so pretty. The Super Shock Shadows are so affordable. So go pick this up in your next ColourPop order. 
Okay, I have an eyeshadow too. I used this in our last Get Ready video, but I ended up loving this and wearing this like literally every day. I have it on right now, if you can see. It's just like a, um, it's a like medium pigmentation liquid eyeshadow. It's Rum Beauty in the shade Heart. It's like a, um, like a, what would you say, like a, the bracket in three. I saw that Alana used this in her video and she said the same thing. I tried to, in that video, actually write the shade name and I didn't know you can do brackets in YouTube descriptions and it wouldn't let me so I just wrote heart and she did the same thing <laughs> but it's such a pretty shade I love the formula I mean I could go on and on but basically it's so easy to use it's not like liquid shadows that dry down really fast you have play time I just dab it on blend it with my fingers um you can build it up it wears really nicely and I love this shade it's like a slightly warm brown you can see it in the tube the actual like well, you should swatch it too. Okay. Well, not, no, not right now. We'll insert a swatch. Okay, we can insert a swatch. Um, and I love the packaging. So this was a hit for me. I want more shades. Okay, next up is a powder that I've spoken about before. It's the Jaclyn Cosmetics. What is this called? Sheer Light. Or no, it's the Powder Move Loose Setting Powder in Sheer Light. Again, I hate this packaging. It's like way too bulky. I can't travel with it. But this is a really beautiful loose powder. I feel like it just creates a really nice luminosity on the skin without being too glowy like it's it's very like a, a natural glow I would say and it doesn't settle into my lines or make my makeup look cakey it just kind of like gently sets the makeup um and it just it wears really well throughout the day I feel like it's good a good powder for touch-ups I really love this I think I mentioned in that weekly favorites I talked about this or whenever I did there's a lot of like silicones like dimethicone in here and I think that's why it just kind of like plumps up the skin a little bit so it just kind of makes your lines look a little less noticeable which is like really all I'm after at this age um and I haven't really heard that many people talking about this I don't think this is for oily skin because like I said it does have a glow so if you're looking for like a matte setting powder this is not it but I know that I'm going to be reaching for this like all summer because I just think it's like really really beautiful and luminous for like a summer summer glow you know Okay, I'm actually really surprised I ended up loving this so much, but it's a Say Beauty Concealer. What is this thing called? The Hydro something? Well, you guys know. Hydro Beam. Hydro Beam Concealer. I have the shade 2. The shade range really is bad. Um, I thought shade 2 wouldn't work for me because it is pretty dark, but I do find that because it's so... Okay, I don't even want to say sheer because it was described as like kind of a sheer coverage, but I don't think it's sheer. I do think it covers my dark circles pretty well. Um, it doesn't cover like breakouts but they don't really market it is that they market it as like a really luminous I'd say like under eye concealer and that's what I use it as and I have it on today and I just feel like nothing like I still love my Kosas that one has more coverage but this one has like actual luminosity that I think there's like actual pearls in here making your under eye look luminous and I find that it doesn't crease um it actually does wear pretty well again like something that really surprised me I've worn this multiple times um and it's like by the end of the day, it still looks okay. I'd say it loses some coverage at the end of the day, but it still looks like fresh somehow. I don't know. I'm really surprised by this. Um, I really hope they come with other shades because even I would like a different shade. Because like I said, this is a bit dark for me, but once blended out, I don't think you can really tell. Um, I'd say it's a light coverage or like maybe light to medium, um, but I wouldn't say sheer. I definitely think it helps with my dark circles a bit and... I can wear this on like no makeup makeup days with just like some cream blush and concealer or I can wear it to like today where I have like a full face on and I think it's really flexible and I'm getting older and I think it's just a really nice concealer for like not aging skin but when you don't necessarily like pick coverage over having your under eyes look really youthful like that's what I'm going for and I really like this. Okay we're almost at the end but promise all these products are amazing. Um so i've been really into Devine's hair care i've used the shampoo and conditioner since december and love those um and then our new hair colorist used this on us when we got our hair done and i immediately well i had already actually purchased it the day before ironically and then i was like oh my god my hair feels so nice i can't wait to get that in the mail so it's the Devine's oi which is the same shampoo and conditioner i use all in one milk um and it says with rakuku oil um I don't really know what's in this but it is just so good it makes your hair really soft I will say you have to use kind of a lot like more than I use with other products I definitely like liberally spray this in my hair um, and it makes your hair really soft it's supposed to be like a heat protectant which I do think it does 
Um, it's supposed to be like really like deep frizzing, basically like an all-in-one product. I will say my hair is still a little frizzy, but I just have like a lot of breakage. So nothing really prevents it from being like not frizzy, if that makes sense. Um, but it doesn't weigh my hair down, but it makes it soft. It makes it a little shiny. I really love this. I love like everything that I try from this brand. It's so good. Um, it's not cheap, but it's a really good product. Okay, we have the same favorite book from this month. Mm -hmm. Probably from the past year. Yeah, <laughs> it's my new number one book, which is like yeah. shocking, but I think it beat Verity. Verity is still but like- they're so different. They're so different. They're so different. They're so different. You can't they're really so compare them. Okay, my new favorite romance book. Okay, yeah, it's Book Lovers by Emily Henry. We both read, I don't know if they're all of Emily Henry's novels. We both read- Oh no, she was, this is her backstory. She was a young adult novelist. And she wrote like 20 oh. young adult books. And then her first um, like adult romance book was Beach Read. Okay. So we both read and loved Beach Read and People You Meet People We Meet on Vacation. People You Meet on people Vacation. People You Meet on Vacation. Um, but I wasn't prepared for how good Book Lovers was. Like yeah. I knew I would like it. We both rented it from the library on our Kindle, so that's mm -hmm. why we don't have like a physical copy, which I will purchase the physical copy because yeah, I well, love Can you get the Target one then? Because people said there's like um, like a, it's either an epilogue or a prologue that's exclusive to the Target book mm, that like okay, well, we're combines going to all three of her books and the characters in like yeah, one. I'll grab it today. Yeah, people were like, you have to get the Target one. Maybe I'll get it too. Okay, yeah, because I love a physical book and I want, I only keep physical books of ones that I would like to reread eventually and I would like to reread this. Um, so good. So I guess we can start with like the premise. Yeah. Um, so it's about, well, what are their names? I always forget characters' names. I know me too, but it's Nora and Charlie. I knew it was Charlie. Okay. Charlie and Nora. Charlie Laster. I love his name. Yes. I love him. <laughs> and Nora, she's like named after Nora Ephron. If you guys know anything about us and our like journalism background, we love Nora Ephron. Mm -hmm. She, we learned about her in like our first ever college journalism class and like fell in love with her work. We did a whole presentation on her. Yes. You've Got Mail is my favorite movie of all time. I watched it last weekend. 10 out of 10 experience with Nora Ephron and her work. But anyway, so in the book, she was named after Nora Ephron, so I immediately love. And also immediately love because I also love Hallmark movies, and the whole premise <laughs> is that her and her sister go to an idyllic, like Hallmark movie-esque town that, um, so I guess I should say Nora is a book agent, and one of her writers had written about this town called, what was it called? It's definitely like a made-up name. I can't even remember. It, this basically like sunshiny made-up name town mm -hmm. um, in the middle of nowhere, um, and her and her sister go because her sister's like, we have to have like the typical rom-com weekend, or not weekend, they stay for a month. Three weeks. Three weeks. I think it was three weeks. Was three weeks, plan. but then I remember her family comes the last week. Yeah, yeah, so they're yeah. there for a full month. And so they decide to go and just like live out their dreams of living inside of a Hallmark movie. Well, we haven't said this, but they live in New York City. Yes. So like they were big city girls. They grew up in New York City. Yes. Going to this small town for this like small town adventure. Experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we love books about, it had everything I loved. Me too. <laughs> it was like this idyllic small town, which we all like, very Schitt's Creek-esque. If you watch Schitt's Creek, it was like that, but like less character play, I'd say. what the town is you like. I feel like that the town didn't give me those vibes at all. Oh. I would say more like Stars Hollow. I felt like even smaller than Stars Hollow. Oh, maybe. Okay, maybe smaller than Stars Hollow. But kind of those vibes. The small, vibes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Maybe Schitt's Creek meets Star Solo, yeah, actually. Yeah. I think that's a good mashup. Um, so yeah, if you like like that sort of thing, we love books about sisters. We're sisters, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was kind of like they hadn't really connected because they're kind of in different places in their lives. Like Nora is a workaholic. I kind of hate that term, but she's like a workaholic. Um, she's not married. She doesn't have children. Her sister is married, married young with kids. Well, currently pregnant in the book. Yes. Um, so they're kind of like on different paths and this was like a chance for them to also like reconnect. And so Nora goes to this, t well I guess I don't want to give too much away, but basically yeah. she reconnects, See, reconnects with an editor who she's worked with before for some of her clients. She's a, a book, book editor. editor. He's a book editor, Charlie. And it's kind of an enemies to lovers yeah. situation, but I don't know if they were ever enemies. Me either, but it, the whole thing like again showed me, which we say this all the time, but people have bad days. I think yes. like judging someone based on meeting them one time is a bad game because yeah. you never know what someone's going through and this sort of the book and like when they first met versus like when they reconnect yes. kind of like shows you like 
how that's true and how someone can just be like having a bad day when you first meet them and it's not who they really are yeah um and I think you see that throughout the whole book and they actually they're like just perfect together perfect together. absolutely it, perfect it was so believable mm -hmm. the whole sometimes I read these books and I can't give them five stars because I, it's either like so out of reach. Like I'm like these two people would never be together. Yeah. Or like why are they in love after two weeks? None of it's making sense. And even if I liked the story, I liked the plot, I liked the characters. I'm like I can't give this five stars because I'm not believing any of this. Yeah. Whereas like this book, I was like these two are real people. <laughs> ending up together this is perfect and I, they're not real yeah, but it in, felt like it. In my review I wrote that I like I obviously love books where the characters are opposites like mm -hmm. I get it but it was so refreshing to read a romance about two characters that are exactly alike yeah. and like the male female versions of each other because yeah you could just see how it worked where yeah sometimes they make them so opposite yeah you're like how is this even working out you're like yeah maybe i could see them hooking up but yeah. living happily ever after absolutely not exactly um so we don't want to spoil it but it's a really good balance between like the sister and the family um plot line the romance plot line there's a ton of like actual like um, like book industry talk, which we really love. Yes. Um, and also like love small the town. town. Yeah. The town is almost like another character. Exactly. Um, and then one of my favorite things about this, which I didn't put in my original review, but Nora is, um, you know, like she is like a city gal and she works really hard. And instead of making her like feel bad about that, I feel like this book like lifted up characters like that. Like, yeah. well, you shouldn't have to feel bad that you love like working hard and you like like living in a city and you don't want to like settle down in a small town yeah um I mean I don't want to give too much away but I think like so many again so many like tropes in those books are like oh they found themselves in a small town and like never left well they almost like and make fun of that yeah exactly and book. I yeah. don't like that's not true for everything one we obviously live in Los Angeles so yeah. I felt like I could like see myself in this character and I really appreciated that it was a diff different take I'm um, like the lead yes. female in the book. Loved everything about it. It was a perfect, uh, I also should mention, the first day I got it from the library, I was like so excited to start it, but it was really late, so I only got, you know how you can track your um, progress on Goodreads? So I only got 8% of the way through, and then the very second time I picked it up, I finished it. So I read 92% mostly, most of the book in one sitting. I think I read it in three days, but still. That's how quick. like good it was. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's my favorite book. I love it. I it's love so it. Good. Thank you guys so much for watching our May favorites. We hope you enjoyed it. Sorry it's late, but better late than never. Hopefully you found some new things you want to try, and we hope you have a great week.